In PeakSex, a new peptide feature-based approach to de novo sequencing and protein identification has been added, breaking the assumption of one peptide per spectrum. This approach merges peptide feature detection, de novo sequencing, and database search to maximize identification, sensitivity, and accuracy. In this video, we'll go over the new features, including MS1 peptide feature-based peptide identification, DIA support without the need of a spectrum library, improved identification of endogenous peptides, and improved support for ion mobility LCMS. With this approach, data is loaded into peaks, then the LCMSMS data is analyzed to identify peptide features. The peptide features are then associated with MSMS spectra. So multiple peptide features can be matched to a single MS2 spectrum. This allows PEAKS to attempt to match multiple peptides to a spectrum using de novo sequencing, PeaksDB, PeaksVTM, and SPIDER. This has led to a significant increase in the number of peptide identifications that can be made in a single data set. A main reason why this new approach offers a significant improvement is its ability to solve chimeric spectra. This common occurrence in LCMSMS data arises when multiple peptide features overlap in an acquisition window. The resultant MS2 spectra will then contain fragment ions for multiple spectra. Activating this new method is easy to do. During data refinement setup, click Associate Features with Chimera Scans. You also have the ability to restrict peptide feature detection based on a few criteria such as charge and intensity. Spectra that match multiple peptides can be clearly seen in the peptide table of an identification result. For example, this scan has matched four different peptides within a 1% false discovery rate. Click Show LCMS to inspect the data associated with the chimeric spectrum. MSMS scans are represented by blue squares. Peptide features are represented by red circles. Scroll over the peptide features to see the full feature area. Looking at the different peptide features, you can see that the MSMS scan of interest is in the area of multiple peptide features. So, multiple peptide features were acquired in the spectrum. These results are displayed in an intuitive way in our new feature table present in any identification or de novo sequencing result. Here, results are grouped by detected peptide feature. So, if multiple MS2 scans matched your peptide feature, you can see them in the heat map view. And scroll over them using the buttons above the annotated spectrum. You can also use the protein, show spec, and show LCMS to jump to the detailed views about those specific points. Another great interface improvement can be seen here as well. Notice that the fragment error plot scales directly with the annotated spectrum, so it's always easy to visualize the mass error of matched fragment ions. The extracted ion chromatogram of the peptide feature can be seen here as well. Notice the column for de novo sequences in the table. Here, you can see the best de novo sequencing result for scans that could not be matched by database search. By including this, you now have your de novo sequencing results and database results in one table. So, it's easy to see the high quality spectra that cannot be matched by database search, but have a good de novo sequencing result. This result table can be filtered using the feature view filters in the top left corner of the page. You can limit the page to spectra matching entries in the database using the with identification checkbox, filtered by feature area or quality, or choose which identifications to focus on with the radial buttons at the bottom. If you choose only original precursor, only the primary identification for a spectrum will be displayed. If you choose only from Chimera, it will filter the list to show identifications that don't match the precursor of the spectrum, allowing you to focus on Chimera identifications. This approach is especially successful when searching data sets containing endogenous peptides. When testing against previously reported endogenous peptide data, Peaks was able to expand the total number of identified peptides significantly. Since Peaks is now feature-based, it's able to successfully pick up low abundance peptide features. Further improvements were added to Peaks specifically for endogenous peptides, including retrained algorithms to consider diverse C termini expected from endogenous peptide data. Another fantastic opportunity that feature-based identification brings is the ability to analyze DIA data without the use of a spectrum library. By identifying peptide features and matching them to acquisition windows, Peaks is able to identify peptide features from DIA MSMS scans. 
Since multiple peptide features are acquired in the acquisition window, PEAX is able to analyze a single DAA spectrum on multiple peptide features. The process is illustrated here. Peptide features are detected and matched to MS2 scans. Then, XICs of the precursor, as well as the fragment ions, can be drawn. Peptide identification of the different features that match the DIA MS2 spectrum is then performed. Since a significantly larger number of features can be acquired in a DIA spectrum than a DDA spectrum, some novel concepts are used. These include retention time prediction of peptides, reuse of fragment ions, and peptide fragment prediction. We have some DIA-specific interface improvements as well. When looking at a DIA identification, the LCMS heat map shows the MSMS scan range and mass acquisition window. These improvements also provide increased sensitivity when analyzing ion mobility data. Ion mobility data is also very peptide feature rich, so using a feature-focused de novo sequencing and identification approach greatly improves sensitivity for this type of data. Thanks for taking the time to check out the new features in Peaks X. If you'd like to try a demo, you can find one at our website, bioin4.com.